Hi, this is Rick here from Hoagie's Garage. Today we're taking a look at the OBD Link MX Bluetooth version for Android. This is a OBD uh, code reader device. Also looks like it does some data logging and acts as a dashboard. So I'm pretty excited to take a look at this and uh, dive in and see what this thing's made of. So after opening this uh, OBD Link uh, MX box, we get this instruction manual and then the OBD Link unit itself. The unit feels really solid. On the front here, you can see it's got uh, little icons for power, OBD, the host communication, and Bluetooth communication. And all of those have LEDs underneath them. And then also this button here looks like it might be to pair the unit. The instructions look really, really simple. And English, it looks to be perfect. Not like the last device we looked at. So the first thing is to download and install the OBD Link app. So we've downloaded and installed the OBD Link MX app. And then at this point, it's asking us to plug the OBD Link MX into the diagnostic link connector port. So this is basically like your standard OBD2 port that you'd plug any sort of scan tool into. And uh, so I have my OBD Link MX, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it into the OBD port. and it's plugged in. So now I've got the green power LED that's on and then the blue LED that's blinking slowly for Bluetooth. The next step it's going to have me do is turn the ignition on in my car but not start it. So if you have a push to start you make sure your foot's off the brake pedal and you press the button maybe once or twice until you get all the lights illuminated on the dashboard and then you know your ignition's on. The next steps it's going to have me go through is on my phone. I'm going to come down to Bluetooth. Make sure my Bluetooth's turned on. Make sure I'm, I'm visible to other Bluetooth devices. And then after that it's going to have me go back down to the OBD Link MX and actually hit this blue or the button and then that makes the blue LED blink from slow to fast. So once I see that fast blink, then I'm going to come back into here, into my Bluetooth settings. I see the OBD Link MX populated here at the bottom. I'm going to click that. It's going to start to pair. Confirm the pass key. OK. And then at this point, OBD Link MX is shown as paired in my list of Bluetooth devices. It might not be connected yet, which is totally fine, but once you get it paired, you can move on to the next step in the process, which is step 10, um, which is actually going into the OBD Link app. I'm going to do that next. Basically, that message said only connect to OBD Link devices, which is fine because that's what we have now. And then connect. At this point, what it's trying to do is communicate with the car and the different control units to see what protocols are available. So there's some industry standard protocols that it's looking for right now. Getting some vehicle information about my vehicle. Asking me if I want to edit the settings for the connected vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So this is my uh, Acura ILX, so I'm going to put that in. Shows my year, shows my VIN, describes what type of car it is, shows the engine size, the volumetric efficiency, the fuel cost per unit. I'm not exactly sure how accurate that is, but that's what it pulled. So that's good enough for me. I'm going to back out of this. So after we've got the OBD Link MX uh, device connected, we get this menu pulled up. We see that it shows that it's connected up at the top. And then we can choose from you know the six available options that they have there. So if you go into settings, you can change something like the communication, how it interfaces with the Bluetooth, whether it automatically connects. You can go into the vehicle editor, which is kind of what we saw before um, 
I'm talking about the uh, Acura ILX, is this the vehicle you want, da 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 da, -da. Um, Change the units between metric and standard. Um, you can change the logging setup. This user-defined PIDs, so if you know of some PID that uh, you want to be uh, pinging the ECU to try and get data from the control unit, you can add your own PID and then actually add your own math equation in there too. And it looks like you can connect up to Dropbox if you have a Dropbox account and update the firmware too if there's an update. My unit didn't need an update, so that was good there. Also, there's a diagnostics menu. So this, you can pull up any trouble codes you have. This is almost like just having a scan tool. And you can see exactly what the stored trouble code is. So I had uh, one that I had tried to set myself. I unplugged the uh, airflow meter and ended up getting this P102 and then you can also go on and uh, look up the code online which is kind of cool. So it'll sit there and it'll populate and then you can see sort of descriptions of the failure codes and then some of them um, even have remedies of how to fix them so that option is available to you which is kind of neat. Shows you some other information and then it also gives you the ability to clear the code I haven't tried this yet, so I'm about to give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so it asked me to shut off the engine. Let's try and turn back the engine. Okay, let's shut it again. Let's go back and make sure we're connected. It's still connected. Look at the diagnostics. Okay, looks like I was able to clear the codes with that. I'm pretty sure it also cleared the freeze frame data and some of the other stuff. So this diagnostics menu has a bunch of other tabs that you can use. Freeze frame is what happens when there's a trouble code. It'll take a snapshot of all of the uh, different data in the car, and then that way you can use that to diagnose a problem. This PID values is like a constantly running loop of a lot of the uh, parameters that your car is able to monitor. So it might give you an idea of uh, how to diagnose a problem. And then this report looks like this is sort of like a comprehensive uh, list of all kinds of different data you can pull. That's it for diagnostics. And then there's this monitors tab, similar to the diagnostics tab. It'll sort of tell you whether your vehicle is ready for an emissions check in your state. This is just by plugging into the OBD port, not necessarily if they put the uh, uh, exhaust measurement tool at the end of your tailpipe. So that is a totally different test. Um, so just by plugging in, they can tell a lot about the engine, and uh, depending on your state, you can sit here and select your state. So, from Ohio, car is 2001 in New York. If I click that and then click OK, I should be able to see whether my vehicle is ready to pass the Ohio e check. Um, so, yeah, it looks like my vehicle is OK. It would pass. Um, it is ready. Actually, it says not ready for emissions testing. But either way, this gives you a uh, idea of you know, whether your vehicle is good to go when the uh, technician plugs the tool in to give you a check. Looks like there's some other test modes that you're able to use. Um, Either way, that's the monitor section. There's also a dashboard uh, section where you can monitor real-time data. And then you can customize this however you want. So let's say there's one PID that you really want to log. Um, you just click and hold, and then you've got all these options. You can change the size, the display configuration, the style. And you can really configure those gauges however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the display. Let's 
do fuel level input. Okay. I can see it says 50%. I'm not sure what the PID means, but any of the PIDs that you want to put in there, you can or monitor. Rather. Then there's this log section. This is kind of neat because you can pull up a graph of some PID. So looks like what they've got on there now is vehicle speed and mass airflow rate. So right now my vehicle speed is zero. Let's see if I throw it in drive. And this graph automatically scales too, which is kind of neat. speed with respect to the mass airflow rate let me accelerate a little more you see the mass airflow rate starts going up more air is going in the engine that's kind of neat Also look at trip stats, uh, different trips you've taken, see what your fuel economy is. Now that, keep in mind, that's uh, once you set up your vehicle, so you might have to input some of the parameters for that to display right. And then it uh, looks like there's a uh, file section, so if you do want to do want to take a data log, uh, you have the ability to save that to a CSV file and then analyze it later in Excel. So this graphing, graphing's active, do you want to stop? Yes, we're going to stop. Um, that's it for that. And then there's this other section here called Maps. I haven't had time to play around much with this. It looks like it will map your vehicle speed on the actual map. So, so far, this is where I'm at. And then I think depending on what your max speed is, it'll change the upper limit. So here I have the engine RPM gauge pulled up and I'm going to test it against the actual tachometer and sort of see what the data lag rate is. So It's okay. Not terrible. Definitely not instant. But at the same time it looks like it might be quick enough to use for an actual gauge. So overall after uh, messing around with the OBD link tool um, I found it to be very easy to use uh, connecting you almost have to go through that certain step in order in the correct order or else it didn't connect properly um, so it's a little bit cumbersome to get it right and actually had to reshoot that a couple times but once you if you follow their directions to the T it works every time uh, and it's super easy to reconnect every time if you end up getting disconnected um, once you're actually in the app itself D-Link MX uh, application that's really easy to use. Uh, you can immediately go in and we'll start pulling the trouble codes on your car. And then once you pull the trouble codes, you can actually look those up on that, da that database that they give you access to, uh, which I think really is better than a code reader because all of a sudden you have 
some detail on what that trouble code is, because some of them are kind of uh, cryptic, what could actually be wrong. So that's definitely a plus. And then you get the ability to do the data logging, uh, and you get the, the functionality of having the dashboard, the uh, ability to do the emissions check, so that you know you, you want to see if you're 